So something that's pretty interesting is that I saw a few articles, a few news pieces that was talking about Trump sending migrants to Democratic districts, sanctuary city districts, essentially, even though that idea was essentially defunct. And the video that I had prepared, it was a lost episode where I was going through my digital voice recorder and I found a video I actually didn't, or an audio, I didn't turn into a video and upload to the channel. And I listened back to it and I was like, why didn't I upload this? It, it just it just got lost. Maybe I forgot about it after I recorded it and I went to work and then, uh, who knows, okay? But what I was talking about in the video, and I'll go ahead and, and upload it and I'll put some new visuals over to it because it's, it's interesting. Because I talked about the wall and... The wall, I support a barrier in terms of when it, when it comes to immigration. You know, it's hard to overstate the importance of a barrier of a physical impediment when we're talking about border security. Okay, but one of the things that I don't like is the attaching of the biometric entry exit visa tracking system to that wall. Because things that are often geared for our safety or for terrorism usually are turned around back on the American people. And if they can get a biometric entry exit via visa tracking system going they can use that and scale it up to say well this works well with immigrants let's incorporate this uh, for u.s travel american citizens they already have kiosks in certain airports where you can go and scan your eyes and uh, use yourself as your passport and bypass tsa essentially okay and that's what we're talking about is if what one of the things i was one of the things i was playing with is if trump essentially imports these migrants to these sanctuary cities well what keeps the migrants there well why not enforce a form of border patrol at state lines right to make sure that they that they uh, stay in those districts stay in those states and one of the things that i made a parallel to was the bowie high school incident in i think 1992 where bowie high school was um it's a high school along the border and there was language in a piece of legislation that allowed border agents to essentially give a, a shakedown, give the shakedown to anybody they saw if found within, you know, five, ten, however many amount of mileage within uh, the border. And that's what the language included. And it just turned out that these, a lot of these border patrol agents at the time were harassing American citizens because, you know, they were Latino or racially profiling them or whatnot, okay? Maybe you can go read the case, uh, for yourself, but they actually won the case. They 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 sued the federal government and won the case that they were infringing on constitutional rights while doing this. And what it turned out again, it was a, a piece of verbiage in this uh, legislation or however the law was written that allowed them to give people the shakedown basically uh, when apprehended within a certain amount of mileage within the border. And which in some instances makes sense because you can be you know 50 miles from a border out in the desert and it's like, hey, what is this guy doing? Is, did this guy just cross illegally? But it doesn't make as much sense when we're talking about border towns and cities and things like that where, well, you're just right across from the border, but this language can theoretically apply to you. And in this case, it did. So now what if we see that juxtaposed to state lines? If they expand a sort of type of immigration deal where they can apply uh, – certain type of limited immigration enforcement at state lines to ensure these migrants stay in these cities. And now we're talking about border patrol enforcement essentially happening at state lines, and perhaps they'll include some piece of language that says we can give somebody the shakedown if found within, you know, five, ten, however many amount of mileage within uh, the border or the state line. So it's pretty interesting. And when we're talking about biometrics, right, which is, you know, fingerprints, eye scans, um, radio frequency identification, right, RFID, and applying that, again, if we're, if we're going with the notion of what happened after 9-11 uh, and all these things that were essentially geared towards terrorists and to keep us safe was turned back against the people and limited them in ways, right? We have the travel ID, the national ID card. Uh, these things are trending in this really strange direction where it, it, it's almost hard not to find nefarious underpinnings. And even though that was a defunct idea, Right. There was there was fan bases from Trump, uh, Trump's rabid fan base. I mean, you know, everything he touches tur turns to gold anyway. So, of course, people endorsed it. But there was even um, Democrats, not the upper echelon Democrats, you know, the officials who have to save face. But, you know, the voting population who was like, yeah, you know, bring them here. This could be a great way to have migrants stay in the United States. So basically, I'm just teasing out this idea that if we've already seen sort of language that was used in, in bills and laws before where there was this oversight, right, where they allowed this situation where Border Patrol agents or government agents can harass American citizens, which 
<laughs> happens all the time. I mean, what, what happens with these police, this increasing police state where this stuff is happening? I think we're going to see something like that transition into... I, mean, I think we're going to see something like that basically be folded into immigration enforcement within the United States. And of course, it's not going to be for immigrants. It's going to be for us. They're developing a system to keep us locked in. That's basically what I'm, what I'm getting at here.